Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Muzz Lightyear. Today, we're going to talk about why trying to make more money usually means you'll make less money. Now, what do I mean by that? One of the most common advices that's given to novice traders, novice investors, is risk management. But what does that mean exactly, risk management? One part of risk management is to undertrade. Undertrade, undertrade, undertrade. And what that means is that whatever you think your position ought to be, maybe cut it in half. You know, a lot of times when people trade and they don't invest, which is more long term, trading is short term, they trade about, you know, three to five times too big. They are taking five to 10% risks uh, based on the value of their portfolio when they should be taking one to 2% risks, you know? And a lot of the times, especially in crypto, what they don't realize is that a lot of the different trades that they make, they're all correlated anyway. Markets in crypto usually all move at the same time. And often they all move at the same way as Bitcoin, which is why here I've got the Bitcoin chart showing up from Crypto Stackers Pro. You can see on the red lines when it's overheated, on the green lines when it's a great buying opportunity. But the thing is, if you have a number of trades set up in crypto in particular, then what you don't realize is that you're probably highly correlated. And that's one of the most serious problems when it comes to trading in crypto. Preferably, I prefer investing, but sometimes you want to trade. So you think that you have eight trades uh, in different industries, maybe one in DeFi, one in Metaverse, one in Layer 1, you know, and you think you're, you know, pretty diversified. But actually, because all the crypto markets move in the same way usually, you're really just trading one position that's eight times as large. And a lot of times, there's a need to do something, especially when the prices are growing up. That feeling is like, you know what, I want to be a part of this, oh, there's money, that's being made. I'm reading stuff on Twitter and seeing stuff on YouTube, but everyone's making all these great gains. And a lot of time, this desire for constant action, you know, irrespective of the underlying conditions of risk, is responsible for so many losses. Even amongst the professionals on Wall Street, it's a cause of a lot of responses for them of uh, losses. It's almost as if people feel the need, like when money is being made by other people, they have to make it as well. And there's a lot of times when, when the market, you're not sure what it's doing, it's best not to do anything. It's just best to watch what's going on because it's not your job to make the market agree with you. You have to agree with the market. You know, it's a lot like playing poker, for example. A bulk of what goes on should be just you watching. You know, an experienced player will probably only play about 20% of the hands that they're dealt. And they'll not play all the others. They'll just watch. They'll see what happens. They won't even get round, get past the first round of betting. And a lot of the times, you know, think about the 80-20 rule. 80% of it, they'll just watch other people play. And they'll learn. And they'll see what people are doing. And they'll see patterns. And then, when the time is right, they'll make a move. Because just you're not... Just because you're not involved in the markets and you don't have any trades open doesn't mean you don't get to learn from what's going on. You know, that's true in poker. That's true in investing as well. So you have to remember an important rule is not to try and play great offense, is to play great defense. You know, there's a saying in sports, defenses win championships. You know, you have to stay in the game. Stay in the game as long as you can, for many, many years, for decades, you know, take the assumption that every position that you have open is wrong, you know, always be wary, cover your blind spots. And one of the most important advices that someone investing in crypto or in traditional markets is have to have is to focus on protecting what you have. Don't focus on trying to make money, focus on protecting what you have. Be very selective. Wait for the right trade to come along. You don't trade for trading's sake. Have the patience to sit on your money until the high probability trade sets up exactly right for you. 
And the thing is, when you manage how much your trades are as well, you put in half of what you normally would, for example, uh, for your position. When you don't care as much, you do better. You know, a lot of the times when it comes to dating, for example, people can sense when you're trying too hard, you know, when something really matters. You know, and a lot of the times when you're a bit more relaxed and you know you have options and you know you're not desperate on any one person and investing any one trade, you do better. You know, you, you're able to think more clearly. and that means that you know when you've got a position that isn't open too much and even if it goes down you know it hurts but it doesn't hurt you too much you can cut your losses because a lot of the time when making money is so important to you people have trouble even just taking small losses especially when they bet an amount that's too large for them you know and they have trouble taking small losses and as a result those small losses end up turning into moderate losses, which are then even harder to take. And then finally, those moderate losses turn into big losses, which you're then forced to take. And that was all because it was hard to take a small loss, you know? So think about when it comes to taking profits, perhaps lean towards being more aggressive, more often than not. Because if you're constantly taking profits, you'll never go broke that way. And perhaps it's the same when it comes to taking losses. Maybe be more aggressive, actually. Be willing to take that small loss. It doesn't mean anything to wait till you break even, you know, and then decide, okay, once I break even, I'll get out of the trade. Because if you're going to do that all the time, those losses that were small are going to become moderate, are going to become large. And then suddenly you're in a position you don't want to be in in the first place, you know? The decisions that were made in the past, you have to think of them as sunk costs. You have to think of them as someone in the past who made a decision for you. But this present moment, you, has new information and has to make decisions based on the information you have now. You don't have to rely on what someone in the past did for you, your past self, based on the information that was now outdated. So you have to make sure you licked sunk costs not play a factor in your investing. Because the only thing to do when a, when a man or a woman is wrong is to be right by stop being wrong. It, it, it sounds trite, I know, but that's the only thing we can do. And yet in history, we see so much repetitions in the way that the markets operate, in the way that people behave as well, in the boom markets, in the depression markets, and the one thing you'll notice over time is that the game doesn't usually change and neither does human nature. And you need to be aware that you're also fallible to those kinds of fallacies, myself included. I've been there before, you know, been in a place where I wish that I should have just taken the small loss instead of, you know, waiting to, to break even. Being in a position where I bought into the narrative of something like, uh, Olympus Dow, you know, and then I didn't manage my risk well enough, you know, but the good thing is that because I've made those mistakes, I don't have to make those mistakes again anymore. And instead of trying to make money fast, I'm going to play great defense, happy to make money slow because I know in the long run, that's where I'll be there. You know, if you look at uh, Warren Buffett's net worth, I recommend checking it out on uh, on Google. There's a chart to see what his net worth is over a period of time. And you'll just see that it's just steady. It's steady and steady and steady for the first few decades. And then once it starts to really compound, it just takes off. You know, that's why for, you know, a lot of people who try to create social media followings, it takes a long time to get those first few subscribers, you know, to get 10 subscribers, you know, but then it'll not take as long to get 50. It'll not take as long as to get 100, to get 1,000. And then suddenly things start stacking up. And you'll get that as well when it comes to investing, when it comes to trading. You know, when you play great defense, that's what you'll get to see. 
And when you try to make more money, you'll end up making less money. So instead, play great defense, not great offense. Focus on protecting what you have. Play the high probability trade. Put in money in your investments in your trades that if it does go down, it doesn't trigger you. It doesn't affect you. Because, because then that means you manage your risk well. And that's the position that you want to be in. So that's the advice I wanted to give out today. If you thought any of that was helpful, please do smash the like button. It'd be greatly appreciated. It helps the message and the channel get out to more people. And if you like this kind of video, this kind of content, then please do subscribe. I release more of these videos uh, regularly. And they've got a lot more coming up as well. Thanks for making the time. Speak to you again soon. Over and out.